The Cold War led to a huge boost to the development of all types of weapon systems, and combat aircraft were no exception. By the end of the 1960s, the US and the USSR both came to the same conclusion. It was time to introduce a new generation of fighter aircraft, the fourth generation, and make it the core of their respective air forces. The Soviet side made the leap with the MiG-29, also known by its NATO reporting name, the Fulcrum. The goal was to design a vehicle that would excel in its role as an air superiority fighter, prompting Soviet engineers to deviate from their traditional formula in favor of extra agility and increased performance at close range. They equipped the fighter with a single GSH-30 30mm cannon to give it an edge in fights against enemy aircraft. The new MiG could also carry two types of missiles for medium and close-range engagements. Furthermore, it had ground attack capabilities, thanks to a wide range of payload options, from rockets and bombs on the earliest models to smart bombs and guided missiles on later ones. The MiG-29 was an immediate international success, with more than 1,600 aircraft rolling off the factory floor and making it to all corners of the Earth from the countries of the Warsaw Pact to North Korea. Some operators modified their MiGs to better suit their needs. For instance, after the unification of Germany, 24 aircraft that had previously been used by the GDR were integrated into the air forces of West Germany and received modifications to fit NATO standards. There are four variants of the MiG-29 available in War Thunder. When it comes to overall tactics of their employment, they're quite similar to each other, but each of them has its own quirks and unique capabilities. Let's start with the main selling point of the series, though, the helmet-mounted sight for your missiles. In short, engineers integrated a missile guidance display straight into the pilot's helmet, allowing you to quickly lock onto targets by simply looking at them and launch your missiles faster than your opponents. When it comes to the early variants of the jet, the 9.13 and the 9.12A, the helmet-mounted display is most effective with the R-27ER missile. You can just close the distance and attack the target head-on. Apart from the semi-active radar homing missile, early MiGs can also carry four R-60M missiles, or their export version, the R-60MK. Fire off your medium-range missiles to make the aircraft considerably lighter, and now you're ready for close-range engagement. Make use of your superior maneuverability to dodge enemy missiles and shots. With your excellent roll and turn rates, there will be a lot of opportunities to attack your targets from the most unexpected angles. The MiG-29 SMT, the 9.19 version, is considerably less effective in dogfights. It was fitted with a new fuel tank and additional avionics, increasing the weight of the aircraft. So we don't recommend getting into close-range engagements with agile opponents like the F-16. On the other hand, the aircraft also received a game-changing set of new shiny toys to use in combat, like the flare-resistant R-73 missile and the brand new R-27ET missile. Those are really hard to dodge, allowing you to employ the SMT as a kind of flying missile dispenser that destroys every aircraft unfortunate enough to get into its sights. The German version of the more advanced MiG-29, the 9.12G, is a completely different story. It was upgraded with NATO-compatible communication and navigation systems and received new missiles without noticeable changes to its airframe or its weight. It's still mostly suited for short aerial engagements, but it also has the same excellent flight performance of the early models. What's important to note is that the MiG-29 isn't just effective against other aircraft. It's a pretty good pick for close air support as well. Most variants of the fighter can only carry rockets and bombs, but with the help of a ballistic computer, an experienced pilot can still reliably hit weak spots of tanks on the ground. On the other hand, it's not a good idea to climb too high, as that'll make you an easy target for enemy anti-air missile systems. If you're especially worried about the AA capabilities of the other team, go for the SMT variant of the MiG-29. This model can easily destroy AA vehicles with its wide range of guided munitions. 
The MiG-29 is still in service in many countries today, and it's waiting for you in War Thunder to test it out in combat. What do you think about this fighter jet? Tell us in the comments below.